Oh, welcome to another episode of Figma Plus Tableau. I am Lindsay Betzendahl, Tableau Zen Master and Consultant Design Specialist at Health Data Viz. And today I'm going to bring you a short video on alignment. And if you haven't watched my previous videos on frames and text, uh, be sure to check those out. Those will give you um, a bit of a starter in some key things to learn in Figma. And I'm trying to do these kind of in order of some of the basics to get you going before we build bigger things that can be used in Tableau. All right. So today we're going to talk about alignment. So uh, in Figma, alignment to me, we're talking about how to align shapes. We talked about text in a previous video. So this is mostly about aligning objects uh, within your frame or, for example, you know, a subsequent uh, future dashboard in Tableau. So in Figma, these are what the alignment, let me zoom in on this, look like. You'll see they're right up here on the right hand portion of your screen. Uh, when you click on an object, they pop up. So what we have here is a line left, center align, right align, top, uh, this is middle and bottom. This is um, distribute uh, items vertically um, evenly vertically or horizontally. So if I select a few things, you'll see this pops up, distribute vertically, distribute horizontally. There's also a tidy up. So if you have a number of things selected, the tidy up becomes an option where it kind of does some funny things <laughs> to tidying up, giving it its best shot as to how you want your objects organized. So I use alignment a lot, and this helps me um, make things really pixel perfect where I don't have to specifically be the one to do it. I can have Figma do it for me. So let's go through how all these work. Um, right here, I have two objects, two rectangles. And so what you need to do is if I select both of these and I click align left, they will align them at their leftmost um, axes essentially. Center align will obviously put them in the center and you can see when I select the one on top I can move this and it will be centered align right here. So I can manually align left, align right, center align, uh, chop center, and bottom center but this um, really helps me, oops, let me pick two things, helps me do this quickly. And so you'll see, depending on which I did first, so I clicked my transparent shape before the other one, it aligns to that one's right. Let me do that again. If I select the bottom one and then the top one and I align top, it basically fixes this first shape and aligns the second one with the first one. Again, if I click this one first and then the bottom one and I align bottom, it's going to bring did that do that? No. Let's see here. I'll try it again. This one, then this one. Oh, it's still did the other way. Um, okay, so it's going to align them based on that. The other thing I want to share is um, how I use these. Again, aside from just quickly moving things around, um, is with multiple objects. And I'm going to talk to you about two different uh, ways to use this. So let's say in this case, I have these random shapes here and I want to make them into these types of containers for future bands or big ass numbers in Tableau. I can either manually select and shift each of these, or I can also just drag across and it selects them all. I just did that with my mouse. Now that I have my rectangles um, selected, I want to, first I want to center align them and then I want to distribute them horizontally. So now they're evenly spaced. Then I have these three. Now, the thing is what I want really is to have them all like this, let's say, but I want them all evenly spaced and obviously they're not right now. A couple ways to do this. Um, first, I can just say, well, I know I want this one. Let's say I want this one over here and I know I want this one on this end. I can just click all three of these. Oh, I didn't do what I want. Uh, 
and distribute evenly and it moves that center one. So essentially it takes these two and puts this one in the middle. And now you'll see that our, this one is in the center. These are off where I wanted them to be. Again, you'll see that again, if I move this one here, again, let's move that somewhere else. Let's say I have, let's just even say I have another one somewhere. If I put these two at the two endpoints and I select all four circles and I distribute horizontally and then center them, they now will be evenly spaced based on the first and the last one that I selected. So very frequently, I'll just put the last uh, shape where I need it to be in the first one and then say distribute them all evenly. And that way, I'm not doing some of this where I'm saying, you know, these are so many pixels apart and then I can go like this. Oh, now they're 53 and then here's another one. Oh, 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 now it's 53, right? It's way easier just to say, I want this one here and this one here and put these wherever they're supposed to be in the middle. The other thing is that sometimes I want to distribute evenly groups of shapes, right? So let's say, um, let me just move these down for a second. Um, actually, another thing I wanna share while I'm at it is how to hide things. So right now, I, I kinda need, need this space. If I go over to my left hand uh, layers pane, I, there's a little eyeball. I can actually unselect and hide all those things just so I have some extra room to show you something else. Okay. Let's take these two objects and I'm gonna right click and group them together, okay? So now I have one object and you see, obviously this is the whole space of it. Once I have an object together, let's say I have a couple of these, I can now obviously distribute objects evenly. Now, if I were to do this, um, within the individual thing. So sometimes I'll group things together just so the whole groups can be evenly distributed. And then if for some reason I really don't need them, I'll ungroup them. But you know, maybe I really want these to be slightly different, right? But I wanted them to be all evenly spaced as a group. Um, but let's say maybe I really wanted it to look like this. I will group them just so that I can evenly space them apart and then ungroup them because as a group, it will do it based on, so see here, let me just uh, regroup these for a second. You'll see now, because they're different sizes, if I were to try to like center align them, right, they're going to center align based on the center of the actual uh, size of your object. So they're not gonna necessarily, perhaps this is not exactly what I wanted, right? So sometimes I'll just group things because I know um, that'll be easier for me based on the size of the object. Um, so that's some things I use groupings for, um, as well as the alignment. All right, let's ungroup these. Okay. So we kind of did all these that are pretty simple. Um, the last one that is available is tidy up. Now tidy up is a little strange, to be honest, I haven't gotten it to work exactly how I wanted it, but see, it does its best guess. So tidy up actually did a pretty good job. Um, in that case, I had a couple shapes that were a little off center. It's gonna say, hey, you know what? I'm assuming, let's see if I mess this up, what it'll do. I'm assuming this is how you want it, right? So it does. Yep, so it tidied them all up. It center aligned them, it lined all these up, it lined all the green ones up, uh, and I have something that's pretty tidy that I, you know, when I made the shapes, I could have, like I said, you know, quickly done all kinds of nonsense and um, duplicating stuff, and maybe I'm a little messy about it, and it'll tidy it up. See, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't quite always do what I want, but if you've gotten something pretty close, it does a decent job. Okay. So now that I have those. What else? The other two things I wanna share in this particular video, aside from how to use alignment, which we pretty much went over um, the majority of the things I wanted to show there. Again, you can do any of this for, um, you could take your um, text boxes, right? And any of these things and line them up. As mentioned, you'll see this text box. Let me zoom in here. This text box is a little off kilter from this one, even though they look aligned, because I have this center aligned. If I really wanna line up my objects, I should left align this, press shift on that, and then 
line them up. And now they're actually lined up based on the object. Remember, it's not where something like text is within the object. It's actually um, the space around the object. So this is another thing that we can do with frames as well to make sure that things are the right size and are lined up the way we want them to. Uh, I'm working on a viz right now where I need to create some shapes. And so I'll use a frame. You'll see this is a frame. And then I've put a shape in a particular portion of the frame. So I've aligned this up here. But So by using frames and aligning um, or using that to align them, so I have all these frames you can't really see, um, instead of just uh, trying to align these shapes. Like I don't want to align this shape with this shape because then they'd be next to each other. I actually wanted to just align all of my frames and put things within, put objects within the frames. So that's another way to clean up alignment if you have some things you want to align based on you know, a larger dimension or with some margins, put it in a frame and then align the frames so whatever's in it is exactly where you want it to be. Okay, so sorry, going back to the other thing I wanted to show you. So I showed you how to hide some things, right? So you'll see I can bring all that stuff back that I had hidden before. The other thing I do frequently that is sort of related to alignment, but it's about fixing things. So here, within my frame, I actually have two rectangles. And you'll see I can't actually click on them because down at the bottom here, they're locked. So if I unlock them, I can obviously move them around. Now, the reason I lock something is because when I'm playing around with other objects on my uh, view, or in my canvas, I want to be able to like say select all of this stuff at once, right? Like I just want to like drag and select these things, say. I don't want to select the background or if I just like start to drag, it actually drags that off and I'm just trying to select these objects. So I'll lock the things in the background that I know are just staying put. Like I don't need to touch them. I don't need to pick on them. I don't need to move them. And that way now when I click on this peachy area, nothing happens. And when I drag to select things, it does not select those two rectangles. You'll see that they're not selected even though I'm dragging around them because they are locked now to my frame and I can't touch them unless I unlock them. It's a great way to keep things from moving around if you know it's going to be in the background, uh, like all this stuff. I can just lock all this down and say, you know what, I don't want it to move because I don't want to accidentally, you know, mess with it. So now nothing gets, I can still edit it, right? Like I can still modify um, this, like I can still write in here, but I can't move it now. And uh, I won't be able to, you know, edit some of these other things because they are locked. So that's a great thing to do when you're making, uh, you know, background images or something like that. And as I mentioned with the hiding, I'll, before I close, I will unhide the image that was the inspiration for this. And as you all know, I look online a lot for inspiration and try to replicate it in Figma. So this is the image I had found. Uh, and we'll go over in another session about shapes and how I got this image and, you know, did some masking and uh, made some shadows and whatever. So hopefully that looks as close as I could get it to um, that image. But that is it on alignment. And uh, let me know if you have additional questions about it, but hopefully that helps you get started. Thanks so much for tuning in.